Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here and today is part three of my um, repurposing uh, junk jewelry and broken jewelry into making dangles. So in part one you saw how I, I analyzed each piece of jewelry and how I was going to use it and how I was going to take it apart. And I went briefly into uh, how to make a dangle. And then in part two, I showed you more where the jewelry was taken apart and how to make different dangles and the tools to use and, you know, items you might have might need in order to make your own uh, dangle jewelry or dangle um, components. So this is the finished result. Everything you see here was made from what you saw me take apart. These are all the filigree pieces used in the different dangles. There's parts of that silver and pink necklace in here. The earring parts, you saw me use earring parts, in, and I'll go over some of these individually as well. And uh, then I had a lot of the black beads left over, so I, I made some uh, repetitive similar dangles. And this is what I have left. I have a handful of these flat beads and two pieces of chain. And only because I, I really ran out of stuff uh, that I couldn't, couldn't really make these into dangles. Well, I could have uh, still used these, but it would have been kind of boring and kind of simple. So I decided I'll either save them for uh, another project or add some more beads to this little collection and, and expand it. But in total, there are 46 pieces here, which is pretty amazing. And, you know, in the first one, I showed you how uh, to just attach the um, dangle onto a safety pin so that you can pin it onto something very easily. And uh, any of the dangles that have, they all have the eye, of course, at the top. So you can add a bulb pin to them. You can add a safety pin. You could add a paper clip. Um, you can attach it to a piece of lace or something that has a hole in it already. You can use additional jump rings if you need to, to extend it or connect these to other beads or chain. So there are lots of options of how you can attach it. And here's the one I did with the paper clip. And um, uh, so that shows you how you can use the paper clip in, in your, your art pieces and connect it that way. And, and that would be a really fun uh, piece on the side of a page. Um, if you have your page and, and your paper clip is here and it's holding stuff and then your, your piece hangs down at the same time. So now I'll just quickly go through the different pieces I made. And then I have another little kind of an offer that I'm going to offer on this video. So this piece, you saw me take the earring backs off of the uh, gold piece here and turn it into a cabochon by adding it to the filigree piece and then adding another dangle coming off of it. Um... These ones here were made using a pair of purple earrings, and then I made a second connection uh, by adding uh, this bead with the extending uh, spacer beads um, to make a, a lovely dangle that way as well. So, and again, these can be attached to other things even more so, you know, as long as you have an eye pin at the top or, or bottom, you can keep connecting. So I made two of those. And then I made a couple of different styles of this one where I used the filigree piece, one of the black beads from that necklace, and the rose uh, silver bead. Um, the only things that I added extra to this collection was any of the little spacer beads uh, and, and some rondelles in order to you know give more length to the piece, as well as use the uh, spacer beads to hold um, some of these beads on the pin when they had really large holes. So it kind of blocked up the hole a little bit and it allowed it to um, keep it on the pin. So now this has two connections. You have a connection where you're connecting to the filigree piece and then you have a connection where you're connecting to this other uh, silver rose bead. 
And the reason I'm saying that is in the case of this one here, I've just put as many beads as I could get on a pin. One pin, you know, I just scooped them all up and then made a loop at the top, bing, bang, bong, and it's done, right? Um, but it's, it's when you start adding other connections and adding two or three different uh, components that it gets, it takes a lot more time. So when you see these for sale, and, and you question, you know, sometimes uh, people sell them, uh, you know, from, from one extreme of price to the other. You have to question as to what's going into it. Like I used to sell these, uh, I think two years ago, I was selling these online and, and I, I would just make the single component. And every once in a while I would throw in one that's got two or three um, just so it, it made a nice collection, but I sold them fairly inexpensively because these are very fast to make. And, and I, you know, they weren't expensive beads and, and I was able to put them together pretty quickly, but that comes from years of experience and, and from my, my uh, jewelry making days. But when you start getting into, uh, adding, uh, several layers and you have to make loops on either side of your piece and you have to sometimes add jump rings, um, then it gets to where it's taking a lot more time. There's more work put into it. So uh, when you're out and you see these for sale, look at how the person has done them and look at how much uh, work has gone into them. And in some cases, people use very expensive beads. They use uh, multifaceted crystals. They use um, uh, uh, cloisonne, clo cloisonne beads or, or enamel beads. Uh, you know, there's so many different beads uh, and uh, lamp work beads. So sometimes you have to look again at the components that have gone into these dangles uh, to realize the price. And after you make a few, you will understand the, the, the range of prices from making you know, a single bead uh, collection on one pin versus making a collection where you have to add the jump rings and create your own eye pins because, you know, in this case, you have to put an eye on either end. Um, so these things take time. So then in this style here, I used that long silver bead, added some spacer beads and rondelles, and then did the same thing with the rose and the filigree, a little bit more work to it. I hope you can see these good. So I made several different kinds. Um, I like this one, so I made I made two, uh, three of them there. And then this was that earring I showed you, and how fun was that? And and you know the the connection here is this lovely pink crystal, and um, it's it's a uh, multifaceted, but it is acrylic, but still has lots of glimmer and shine. And then the color combination is just perfect: the gold and the pink and a little bit of copper. Very very stunning. I I know you may not get the full um, view of it through, through the video, but it's a very stunning, uh, piece. I, I really like these. And then I had taken apart that, um, necklace that had the multi connections and pearls. And, and, uh, this was the leftover bits and all I did because they were pretty plain, I just added the filigree pieces on the end of them in small, medium, and large, just to, to uh, match up with the small, medium, and large length. And this gives a lot of movement, uh, a lot of interest. And the top piece here was from one of the corded necklaces and it doesn't fully close. I mean, I would have to take the pliers and, and uh, close it or maybe take a piece of wire and wrap the wrap a, a wire around here. If you can see the connection, it's just one of those little loop, um, closures. So, so, and this wasn't an earring, this was a closure on a necklace. Um, so everything is connected well onto here. Um, but, but yeah, I will have to figure out how I will incorporate this into, uh, something where I have to make sure it's stuck on well. So, you know, just a little bit of figuring out to add a piece of wire to wrap around it or something to close it up better or just pinching it close, even more closed with pliers. But yeah, this was all made with the leftovers. And the only thing I had to add extra on these was in order to attach the filigree piece to the last connector on each one of these, I had to use three more jump rings. And like I said, jump rings are not your friend. You'll learn soon enough when you start working with them that they're, they're piddly and, um, take lots of work. So then the next in line was the, the three 
sets of uh, beads that I salvaged that uh, this was a wire wrapped bead. So again, I had to use a jump ring connection. Luckily, in this uh, case of this stone, it came with a gold one that was, uh, it wasn't soldered, so I was able to open it up. Uh, but again, nice, nice uh, color combination. And it's a combination of the, the stone and the pearls that look really good together. So the same thing with this pink one, sort of a light pink. And then this one, I used a component from the bottom of an earring, if you remember. I just attached that. There I had to add a jump ring onto that. Now this one, this was the piece of chain that had the lobster claw. I cut it in half, so I got two chains out of it. And then uh, I did a one, uh, a one piece um, dangle using one head pin to to the bottom of the chain and then I made six additional head pin um, individual components that I added on as well so this takes a little bit of time to do so when you see people selling these and you question the price it's because there's multiple components and um, lots of time invested in this and sometimes like I've got them where I've made them where they're huge long clusters in fact I'll show you one just give me a second I can show you two of them if you just give me one sec oops coming 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 there we go so for example I have this one and you can see all the components on here and it's about seven eight inches long and multiple beads and every one of these has a jump ring adding it on to this this i would charge probably 20 to 25 dollars for one like this only because it's very very time consuming to make it's not the cost of the beads even if you're using very expensive beads it's not the cost of the beads it's all the time and effort and and then in this case i was arranging the colors so that the uh, colors were were throughout in a nice mix and and so you can see that it takes a little bit of time to do all that and then uh, at the bottom I added again some jewelry components that um, from other jewelry that I took apart so that's that's a really heavy duty one this one as well I did this one on a chain bracelet and it has multiple uh, glass beads. It has um, a key at the bottom. It has another long dangle at the bottom. So these are some, some charms that get really intense to do. And, and throughout here, I have different charms and different dangles that I've taken apart from jewelry. So, you know, this is how it starts, is making this style of... of uh, dangles and then just getting more and more involved so this was a uh, chain bracelet it had a lobster claw at the at the top or at, on the one end of it so i was able to, i'm able to use that as a means to clip it onto something and it has lots of fun pieces on it including stones charms all kinds of things so that's again another style there so this is just to give you an idea of how intense these can get Another one that I made with that same necklace was this one. And um, because there were so many little uh, uh, eye pins or, or jump rings at the end of them, I just took all that small earring components and the little dangles and just added them all to the bottoms of this. Um, this one, if you don't recognize it, I had made... Uh, where did it go? I had made this one on, on the last video using the other same... Uh, earring. So it was an earring bottom um, that I turned into a charm. And then um, you saw me do the, the hearts and I explained how I was able to roll that hook of the heart into a circle shape. So it became sort of like a, a jump ring or hook to hook onto. But in order to get, in order to get, because it's going this way, I had to put a jump ring going this way and then another jump ring to extend it to go back this way in order to connect it all because this didn't open up. So 
it's not something that may make sense to you the first time around, but as you're putting jump rings on and, and you've got a piece that's sitting this way, it's because you need one more jump ring to turn it where it'll lay flat or, or in the same direction as your piece. So sometimes you have to extend it with two jump rings in order to get to go the right way. And then this one, because I had tried to make the loop and it didn't work and it ended up breaking off, I glued it down to the filigree piece and then added a separate component on top. And I think this one turned out just beautiful. Uh, I love these ones with the pink hearts. Now this one, I, use, I made two uh, long dangles using a filigree at the bottom, a separate component here and another separate component here, all connected to each other with the eye loop. And I made two of them and then hung them off of a piece of chain. Now I can attach it so that they're dead center, or I can attach it off center using, using, um, jump ring, uh, using a bulb pin or, or a safety pin. Um, so, so you have a longer dangle and, uh, again, it just adds more interest. There's lots of movement in here. So, um, and then there's room on the chain. If you want to still add like little charms and things, you, there's lots of possibilities where I could add more goodies onto here just to keep going and, and get quite intense. Um, then there was this pair of earrings that I loved and it, I, again, you cannot get the full just of this, but this is very, very sparkly. And I had one crystal in that bag. You know, I took the, uh, crystal, um, little components that were, they're like jump rings. They're, they're little hooks. I took those out and uh, redid them with jump rings. This is a very plain one, but you know, sometimes it's very simple and elegant. And, and this is a glass stone multifaceted. So the two of them sparkle very nicely together. Um, so it would be really pretty on, on the end of a page. Here is another one of those pink, uh, beads with that other little earring part that I had shown you that I had done on uh, this one. So two total different looks using the same uh, uh, earring base or part. And again, these ones I had to add the jump rings into them. So here was the other half of that pair of earrings and I still had one more of those pearls left. And I think that looks pretty nice too. That's pretty... And, and a lot of these can be combined together, uh, in, in, in a journal because they're all interrelated with the colors. So this was the one, this is the other earring, the gold earring where I broke off the back of it and I just reconnected the, uh, jump rings, uh, to the filigree pieces to make a three tier kind of looks like a sunflower, but a little bit like snowflakes. I don't know. It's, it's such a cute piece too. And, you know, I didn't attach a jump ring or anything at the top yet because it has the holes in the filigree. So depending on what I'm attaching it to, I, I can just uh, go right through the filigree piece or, you know, like using a bulb pin or a, a paper clip or, or whatever. But if I want to attach it to um, a safety, excuse me, <coughs> a safety pin, then I would uh, definitely need a jump ring to add that to the safety pin. Two more using up some more of those rose beads and the filigree at the bottom and those big chunky uh, pearl, uh, white and purple, kind of a mauvey purple uh, bead there. Um, again, nice components that can be mixed and matched into a journal. Another one of these silver ones, but I ran out of the rose beads, so I, I uh, just use some of these little black beads with, with the rondelles and the spacer beads. Again, I needed spacers in here because the hole in the bead was very big. So in order to close it all up and have everything attached um, and, and not fall off or, or fall through, I had to have those spacers in there. So this is a more intense uh, piece again, where you start connecting and re reconnecting. And then, um, yeah, I've shown you those. Um, again, these were one and two, two, um, components. And then I had still the seashell with one pearl. Isn't that a pretty piece? Like it's just so simple 
and yet um, will look just gorgeous on a journal. Something with the ocean would be nice. Uh, I have a lot of um, seashell beads that, and I don't use them enough and I really should use them more because they would make really beautiful components for for um, doing a, any kind of a sea journal or a mermaid journal uh, would be gorgeous. Um, this blue bead is a wooden bead that was just in the pile wandering around and, uh, you know, once it, by itself, it would be nice just like that too. But I just thought, you know, I had one more pink, uh, of this faceted glass, uh, crystal, not crystal, sorry, acrylic. And, and it looks nice, uh, with the two colors together. Again, it could be an ocean, um, uh, element, um, because of the blue and the pink would, uh, be very nice, uh, on an ocean journal or a by the sea journal. And then, um, all of these little components. Now, some of them, I added the three beads. Some of them, I just made them plain like that with the, the spacers and the rondelles. So that's my 46 pieces. And I think you have a general, Oh, I didn't, I don't know if I showed you these little ones. These were so tiny. Yeah, they they were just little earrings by themselves, like this on a on a little um, post, I think it was. Um, so so I all I did was I added the rondelles, the rondelle and and two spacer beads on a separate pin and connected it to it. So they're tiny, but and delicate. But again, it depending on where you want to use it, it's it can be the perfect little uh, finish. And it's not to say that this couldn't be a dangle off of a chain or off of um, where you add more to it. Uh, like you could add, you could even go back and add these onto this filigree piece, just to give you an example or extend this even further. There's the gold at the top. You can add this to the bottom and make it an even longer piece, which would, uh, really look sharp too. So again, lots of options to connect and reconnect and keep adding and adding. So I think I've shown you all I can show you on in, with what I made in this video. Um, and then the extra part that I wanted was to say, I would like to offer this up for sale. So it's going to be sold as one lot because I have a lot of beads. I have a lot of jewelry. I, I make this stuff almost in my sleep. So there's no end or shortage for me. I have every color of beads and I never stop buying jewelry. You've seen my thrifty uh, videos where I go out and buy jewelry. Now you have a better understanding of what I look for and how I use it. So there are 46 pieces here and I'm going to put them up for sale. It's a one-time sale. You will have to private message me if you are interested. And here's what you get. You get the 46 pieces. You'll get my leftover beads here and the two pieces of chain. And if you remember, I had the, the scarf component that I'm going to just move some of this down so I can add the scarf component that could be slipped onto a piece of fabric and used as a closure. You could like um, anything that you're wrapping around your journal and then just bring your two ends out of either side. And, and this would make a really nice closure. I had the round piece that I said, if you tied on um, a closure end on one end and then wrapped, wrapped your, um, your uh, ribbons or whatever you're using uh, around your journal and then uh, put it back through this end and just kind of flipped it over like a loose knot. Um, so I have that component. I had this really chunky, heavy metal pendant um, with, uh, it's, it's not really beads. It's just uh, meant to look like beads. I don't know. It's like maybe a little bit of uh, enamel in some of them. It's not even in all of them. I don't think it's anything missing. It, that's just how it is. Um, but I have that piece, which is a fun piece. And then I had this big chunky rose pendant with the stone in the center. I don't think it's an opal, but it, you know, it's, I think it's meant to look like it. It's got all the glass um, uh, stones in there as well. And a hook to, or a big jump ring to, uh, to hook it onto something. So now that, that's four pieces and that takes it to 50. 
And then I thought, you know, I had this brace that I told you I was going to harvest. I wasn't going to harvest the beads. I thought, oh, I'll just sell it as a piece of jewelry, but I have lots to sell. So I'm putting that back in here. I had two brooches. Um, both of them worked. We try, we, uh, I showed you that in the first video. They both work. This one has a kind of a, probably a faux amethyst might be real amethyst. I don't know, but it looks faux to me. It's just a little too polished. Um, but I have those two bracelet or brooches. And then I had the amethyst ring with a, this is a real amethyst in here, but it is one of those, um, separated rings it, and we, we uh, tested it. We know it's not silver. Um, so it's just a costume jewelry. Uh, so I'm, I've got that added into there because you could wear it. Um, so that's up to 54 pieces. And what I'd like to include as well with it is I made myself a list here. With this collection, I would include um, an assortment of findings. So I would include some head pins and uh, eye pins, probably about uh, 50 assorted uh, pins. I would include some uh, jump rings in, and this would be both in gold and silver. I would in include some spacer beads and the rondel beads, just like the ones I used to put these together, both in silver and in gold. And probably about two yards of gold wire off the, the roll and about two yards of silver wire off the roll so that if you had to make longer pins or um, you want to connect uh, several together and you don't want to waste um, when you're just putting small beads and stuff. So th it's great to use for that. And then I'm going to also include a sandwich baggie of jewelry, just like the sandwich baggie I took apart and in front of you, I'm going to make a nice mixed uh, sandwich baggie full of jewelry uh, that could be uh, used as components and um, some filigree because I don't know if I have a filigree necklace that I can put in the, in the uh, baggie, but if I don't, I would include, I have some, not necessarily the same ones, but I have some different ones. So I would, I would have about 50 head pins and eye pins and probably give you enough of the uh, rondelle and spacer beads to do that, the mix with it. And then um, like the filigree, I'll give you a handful. I'll give you some different charms and different things that I would put into it. So it would be a nice um, goodie bag extra over and above this. And uh, I, it would all get sold as one component. And if that's not enough, I would add probably a little bit of uh, paper ephemera into the, to the mix uh, just before I close the box. Cause you know, I have to give you a lot of extra stuff. So my price for this is the entire thing. If you live in Canada is, is $60 and that, that includes the shipping. If you live in the United States, it is $70 and that includes the shipping. So that gives you all of this and all of the components. I only have one. So it's whoever contacts me first and you need to private message me through Facebook in order to, to get this mix. If it gets sold and you, um, really do want to purchase one, uh, I don't know that I want to do it as a custom order because it, you, you saw how much work goes into this. It's not worth my, my time to do this as a ongoing selling item. Um, but I may offer this video, uh, more as a work in progress where I, I take apart stuff and then I, I will offer something that, you know, maybe half of it I will offer as a sale item and half of it I would keep for myself. So that's a possibility in the future. So if you say, you know, I'm kind of interested in, in getting one after this is sold, then, um, I, I will contact you when I have a, a one made up and you will have like first dibs in order of whoever asks for one. But I don't want to make this as a continuous selling thing because I would get bored to tears and it is much longer than $70 worth of minimum wage time to make these, if that makes sense. <laughs> So, so yes, I'm offering the whole thing at $60 if you're in Canada and payable by e-transfer, please. And, uh, and, uh, $70 in United States and payable by PayPal. And I can send an invoice if you want an invoice sent to you. So that's it for my part three. We will have more jewelry items, um, 
where we do more different types of dangles. I want to do some boho dangles with you. I want to do some other um, dangly things. I've got lots of them, but I want to um, now go on to another uh, tutorial series because I told you we're going to have three different series and I will go back and forth with them with new items each time. It's not that I'm stopping at, at this. Trust me, this is only the beginning. And so, but it, it's just to to not focus too much in one area. I want to give you a little bit of everything and get you started in different areas so that you just say more and more and more. Uh, and, and we just keep making different things. So, uh, this Sunday's tutorial coming up will probably be the start to my, my, uh, floral embellishments, um, series. And, uh, yeah, we're going to start out with some fun and simple, uh, pieces and, and pieces you've probably seen before, but I have a couple of little twists, you know, I do that. And, um, so we'll, we'll start in the florals on Sunday and then, uh, stay tuned on th Thursday, uh, for Thursday's thrifty, gifty, um, thrifty Canucks, thrifty Thursday video, which will be coming up shortly after this one, I hope. And then, um, I also want to do another video this week of my happy mail that I've received. Cause I've, I got a couple of really nice happy mail packages in the last few weeks that I want to share with everybody and, uh, show you some other fun things that we're going to be doing. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please uh, leave me some comments and let me know and what your thoughts are on future uh, videos like this. And if you are interested in this package, I'm only going to offer it up until Friday. If I don't get a response by Friday, I will put it aside. I'm going to be going on holidays uh, next week for a week. I'll tell you all about that in another video, but I'm going to be going on holidays for a week. And so I will it, if you, if I don't hear from somebody and sell it by Friday, it will not be available until I come back. Uh, but thank you again for watching and I look forward to seeing all of you very soon. Bye for now.